Hi everyone. Um, I hope everybody's having a great day today and uh, welcome to today's webinar. Um, this, this webinar today will be for Clean Room and GXP Digital Signage Solutions. So thank you for everybody taking the time out of your day to be here with Brian, Olivia and myself. Uh, we're really excited to get started. So for those, for those of you just joining us, welcome. My name is John Morgan Wilson. Um, I'm part of the distribution team here at Grand Tech. On the call today, um, as I mentioned a minute ago, we have we have my colleagues, Brian and Olivia. A um, few housekeeping things before we get started. Um, we know that everyone is attending has a very busy schedule, uh, but when possible, please try to minimize the distractions. If you're if you are to miss anything, uh, don't worry, you will be receiving a recording of this webinar once it's available. And there's a lot of information coming your way, so feel free to take notes as we go through the presentation and demo. Please provide feedback. As you see, um, we are always looking for ways to improve our experiences. So lastly, um, on the right hand side of the screen, you'll see a chat window. If you have any questions, just pop, uh, just pop, that, pop them in the chat window and we'll address them um, at the end of the presentation and during the Q&A at the end. So we would love to hear from each and every one of you. Please don't hesitate to reach out with questions. And one thing to note is all questions are private and can only be seen by our team. Um, the agenda for the for the webinar today, we'll, we'll walk through briefly here. You'll see we have digital signage. What is digital signage? Um, display information, uh, system architecture, screenshots, features, and how do you get started in digital signage? Um, we, we'll go ahead and go into uh, introductions. We'll introduce uh, Brian Hayes, Director of Smart Manufacturing Solutions here at Grand Tech. Um, and Olivia, I want it. And uh, she's she's a distribution sales manager at Grand Tech, along with myself. So, um, Brian, I'll let you go ahead and um, introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit sure. about, your, uh, about Hi, you. Hi, as John said, I'm Brian Hayes, director of Smart Manufacturing Solutions at Grand Tech. I've been with the company for for 20 years now. Actually, uh, you know, starting out as a fresh face engineer right out of school. And uh, my career has grown with the company and it's been primarily focused on life sciences industry where I've implemented and managed countless automation and information projects. As the SMS director, I manage a portfolio of productized solutions that are focused on pharma, biopharma, and the med device industries. Thank you, Brian. And Olivia, I'll pass it, pass it over to you for a brief introduction. Yes, thank you, John Morgan. Hi everyone, my name is Olivia Iwanek and I am a sales manager on the distribution team here at Grand Tech. I don't have a long history like Brian here, but I've been with the company now for about three months. So fairly new um, and I'm in the New Jersey, Philly area. So I'm looking forward to um, talking to you all. Thank you, Olivia, well, I, we appreciate that. All right, um, we're, we're going to go into our, our fo first poll question, and if everybody will will um, we will answer this, we will, we wanted to wanted to start this out by asking everybody, uh, where are you in your digital signage journey? Um, we have have a couple couple points here. We have uh, you know have have you thought about it? Um, are you in a position where you're wanting to implement but need more information? Um, are we in discussion? Or are we actually piloting one now? So if, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take a couple minutes, let everybody get their answers in, and uh, we will go from there. So. All right. It looks like we have uh, we we have a few. Um, he, everybody seems seems to be in uh, in a couple of different spots here. So thank you all for answering there. Um, looks like we have a bit of a a bit of a diverse crowd. You know, some people are in discussion. Uh, some people have uh, showed showed the the need to or wanting to implement, but uh, they just need need for more information. Those two are our biggest ones. So hopefully we can get you guys the information that you need today. Um, we have, a, we have a lot in store for you, so thank you for answering that. And Brian, at this point, I will pass it on to you. And um, Great, thanks, John. There. So the first thing 
I want to mention about digital signage is that it's used practically everywhere. Or it's at the mall, in sports stadiums, and in restaurants. It's a technology used worldwide across many sectors of our global economy. Businesses use digital signage to accomplish a number of goals. You know, they want to inform people, so consolidating information from multiple sources onto a single, easy to read display. Um, it's also helpful for advertising purposes. Digital signage can assist businesses to influence consumers and to enhance the customer experience. And finally, digital signage is used for assistance purposes, so helping people navigate within a large facility like a mall or to interact with a business, maybe showing how much of an item that the business has in stock, for example. Uh, next slide. In manufacturing, digital signage is primarily informational in that it consolidates information from multiple systems in an organization for displaying that information to operators and managers. It's an industry 4.0 technology, but I'll get to that in a later slide. But in the life sciences industry, digital signage can be posted outside of clean rooms or within GXP corridors to enunciate the status of the area. The information can show environmental metrics like temperature, humidity, dew point, differential pressure, and others. Uh, the status of the room, whether it's in operation, it's clean or, or being cleaned, or another status. It can show the production schedule for an overall area. It can display process data or any combination of information really gathered from the many systems that are in place across the life sciences organization like EMS, MES, PCS, and so on. Right, next slide. So what does a digital signage application replace in a manufacturing facility? It's a great solution for doing away with those sticky paper post-it notes and those magnetic whiteboards that I know I've seen all over the shop floor. Similarly, digital signage is a convenient way to access information from multiple systems without having to walk around to different terminals and logging in or alt-tabbing between multiple applications across a single screen. And digital signage opens up a number of capabilities that those other non-digital methods don't provide. The data gets up, uh, sorry, the data displayed gets updated in real time automatically. The system is centrally managed and not necessarily by those responsible for consuming the data. The digital signage can combine information from across many different data sources. And these systems are robust and they're architected using modern security frameworks. And I'll combine those last two by saying that you get all the pertinent information you need in one place where you need it at the entrance to a clean room or within the GXP area. So now let's circle back on something I mentioned earlier about digital signage being an industry 4.0 technology. For those who haven't yet been indoctrinated, industry 4.0 refers to the fourth industrial revolution, the digital revolution. It refers to the establishment of predictive autonomous facilities, which rely on a backbone of interconnectivity and automation. It's focused on breaking down silos within both an organization's culture and its data sources. Digital signage is an industry 4.0 technology because it automatically gathers and aggregates data from many sources and then creates a digital window into the manufacturing organization by displaying information that is updated in real time from across multiple sources that is useful and actionable and is displayed exactly where it's needed. So here are a couple examples of information that might populate a digital signage system. You can see on the left, you have production status, you know, product information, batch lot information, production KPIs like OEE, for example. And on the right, you have status of the clean room or GXP area, whether it's clean or, or waiting for cleaning, whether cleaning's in process. And you can see here, there's a room expiry where the, the clean uh, status of the room expires. And here's some more uh, examples, including on the right, a combination of multiple data sources. So, and on the left is environmental status, like temperature, differential pressure, relative humidity and dew point. So 
So what might a digital signage architecture look like? Well, here are a couple of sample architectures. The first shows a combination of on-premise systems and databases and a cloud-based system, all pushing data to the digital signage server. The second shows a single MES system sending its data across. A key point to be considered is that the digital signage system should be designed with scalability in mind. You should be able to add terminals in the future or add new data sources. When you're adding digital signage terminals in the manufacturing space, you need a network infrastructure. And that means ethernet drops and power drops or PoE drops for each terminal. And finally, if you're putting a display in the clean room, you need to make sure that you're using a GXP rated device. We like to use the Modi from Systec and Solutions, but Olivia is gonna talk about that a little bit later on. Okay, so now let's dive in a little bit around the components of the digital signage system. So, you know, first you need your data sources, and these can be on-premise systems or systems that live in the cloud. Next, the data sources feed into the digital signage platform itself, which aggregates the data and serves up the screens. We've implemented these by both using customizable off-the-shelf software, like the Ignition platform by Inductive Automation, and by using custom web applications for some customers who prefer that approach. Sometimes a middleware application is needed to enable connectivity between the data source and the digital signage system. We didn't include this in our architecture drawings in the previous slide, just to keep things simple. A system administration station is used to set up, configure, and manage the overall solution. And finally, the terminal devices are where the magic happens. They display the information that you want to show your users. So how do you manage a digital signage application and then keep it secure? So we typically install and manage our solutions on-prem with an within an existing virtual or physical server infrastructure unless the customer requires a unique architecture, which is when we'd pull in our IIT team to develop something more suitable to their needs. On the application side, we leverage an open source development platform that allows for internal management of the entire application, if desired, and we build configurability into the solution. Customers tend to want us to leverage their site Active Directory for management of users, but we can also use a local source for that. And like I said a few seconds ago, we build configurability into the application front end so our customers have the ability to drive what and how they want the users to see. And for security, our solution can be implemented within the customer's already secure VLAN segmented network as long as we can get access to the sources of data that we need. And we can consult on the best approach for this if required. An Active Directory authentication and a set of highly configurable security permissions ensures that only users with the proper credentials can access the features and functions that they need to. I want to open the floor up to another uh, another poll question here. So uh, thank you, Brian. We certainly appreciate that. Um, what type of signage displays are you currently using within your clean rooms? Um, you know, everybody can be using something different. We'll go down the list. Are you using paper? Is it whiteboards, computers, mobile devices? Uh, can everybody please take a minute to uh, put in the chat what what you're using? If if it's not on this list, please please let us know. It looks like we've got whiteboards, uh, paper, we've got mobile devices, uh, but we, we've, it looks like we've got a little bit of everything here. So, um, yep, yep, ju just a little bit of everything. So thank you guys for, for uh, chiming in there. We, we appreciate that. Um, you know, the, the digital displays can certainly replace a lot of these, a lot of these technologies. So we'll go ahead and move on.
Um, Brian, I'll, I'll allow Thanks, you to John. continue here. Uh, so now before I, I hand the presentation back over to Olivia, you know, since I briefly mentioned environmental monitoring systems and environmental data um, as being a source for digital signage, and uh, EMS systems are, are near and dear to my heart. I, so I just wanted to share a few screens from some of Grantech's EMS solutions. So forgive me for the little segue here, but uh, so on this screen right now, we have one of our alarm summary screens where or various alarms from across the EMS system are being collected for display. And here we have the alarm summary screen um, where we allow the user to perform the various actions on, on those alarms. Uh, and here is a sample map view screen where you can see that various buildings on the campus have, have active alarms. And here is that same screen when one of the buildings is selected you, and you can see the active alarms for that building. And then finally, this is a summary of one of the rooms in that building showing the various environmental parameters and the alarm configurations. Okay, so thank you for indulging me, and uh, now I'm going to hand things over to Olivia. All right, thank you, Brian and John Morgan. And hi, everyone, again. Um, so earlier in, in the webinar, we discussed what digital signage is and what types of information that can be displayed. So now that you have a better understanding, I'm sure you're wondering what that solution is. So first, I just want to give you a little bit of background regarding Systec and Solutions. So Systec and Solutions is a clean room compatible computer hardware manufacturer based out of Germany. And Grantech is the exclusive North American distributor of Systec and Solutions products. Now, what is required for these displays? So on the right on the slide, you'll see the Modi. So it is an IoT HMI system used to display room information and building automation information. And the Modi is stainless steel IP65 rated. It is washed down ready with rounded edges, smooth surfaces, and has no area for entrapment of particles. And the Modi can be cleaned with many cleaning solutions, such as the commonly used spore cleanse and IPA. And it's very easy to install. So, um, and is relatively small. And it's, we have it available in two different sizes, seven and 10 inch and you can incorporate it through PoE or wireless. Power over ethernet is a great feature um, as it limits the cables needed to run Modi within your clean room environments. So next I will be talking about the Modi can be installed two ways, either on wall or flush mounted. So we can move on to the next slide, please. <clears throat> so typically we see customers install the Modi in wall if it is a new construction. However, it is relatively easy to install within an existing facility if you wish. So first, um, I'll go over just how to quickly install the Modi and the removal process. So first, um, you install the insulation frame within the wall. Then you will um, connect the cables, insert the Modi, and then you finish off by sealing with um, the clean room silicone. And if the Modi needs to be removed, it is also relatively simple, which it makes it very easy. So all you do is just remove the silicone, you pick up the molding using a suction cup and release from the magnet holders. And lastly, you can discount the cable. So on the next slide, please, um, I will show you, so here are some photos um, of how you use the suction cup and the magnet to remove and install the Modi. So we can move on to the next slide. So another way to install the Modi is on wall which is a great solution for most of you that are not looking to modify your existing wall structures. So it's the same installation technology as I had mentioned with the end wall. Um, however, it is, the Modi is surrounded by stainless steel and we offer both 304 and 316L stainless steel based on what your preference is. And again, it is clean the same way, um, very easy to clean, rounded edges and no areas for entrapment in your clean rooms. And before I move on to talk about the Modi seven inch features, I do wanna remind everyone, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat and at the end of the webinar, we can answer as many as possible. So I wanna discuss um, some of the features that the seven inch Modi offers. So it can be offered as a PC remote display or monitor. 
and it can run either Linux, Windows, or Android, Android operating system. And there are two different, um, if you move on to the next slide, I'll explain um, the two different processor options. So there are two different processor options available depending on your facility's needs. So it's either the ARM Cortex or the Intel Atom. And the ARM Cortex offers 16 gigabyte of system memory and 16, I'm sorry, one gigabyte of 16 of system memory and 16 gigabytes of storage capacity. While the Intel Atom offers four gigabyte of system memory and 32 gigabyte of uh, storage capacity. Now I'll move on to the 10 inch. Thank you. So really, um, you're probably wondering what the main difference is between the seven inch and the 10 inch Modi. So really, um, all of the features I explained on the seven inch are on these slides and they're the same as the 10 inch. But really the main difference is of course the size, the weight, the power cons consumption, and the resolution. So um, if you want to move on to the next slide, you could see uh, some of the features. And here's some of the um, features of the 10 inch that I did explain um, in the previous slides with the seven inch. And um, depending on your preferences and space availability, uh, the features for one Modi are available on the other Modi. So it's really up to um, what you're able to fit within your clean room space. And then we can move on to the last slide. Thank you. Oh, yep. Oh, well, no more. <laughs> Thank you. So um, that will conclude so far um, our web webinar presentation. But before we move on, um, I do want to thank everyone who took time out of their day to tune into this webinar. I really hope you learn more about digital signage and the Modi and what it has to offer. Um, I do, if you are interested in the Modi, um, please reach out to info at grantech.com and we will be able to provide you with more information and next steps if that's something you're interested in. Um, before we start answering some questions, I will pass it on to John Morgan and we can begin the Q&A. Thank you, everyone. Um, thank you. Thank you, oh, yeah, yeah, Olivia. We, we certainly appreciate that. And I apologize. I got put on mute again. Um, but we're going to go into a question and answer section here. Um, thank you for everybody for listening to us. We have uh, the first question for, I believe, Brian, it, it relates to you. Um, does the POE eliminate the need for wearing PPE to replace one of the display units? Well, that's a great question. So, uh, <clears throat> well, First and foremost, the question of whether or not PPE is required really depends on the individual client or customer and, and what their HSC department requires. Um, but, you know, because the POE is a low voltage cabling, um, it would be, you know, in our opinion, very unlikely that that any PPE would be needed. Good question. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see, let's go on to next question here. How about, um, is the same display used for in-wall units and on-wall units? Uh, Olivia, I believe this one is geared towards you. Uh, yeah, thank you, John. That's a great question. Um, so the short answer is yes. Um, so the only difference is just you need the on-wall bezel. So it is the same. Um, the same display that you would use for the in wall, and then you just need the stainless steel enclosure around it in order to make it more compatible. Okay, thank you. Um, we'll move on. Let's see. Uh, if one of the display units, or say the Modi, must be replaced, is data lost or is the data stored central? That sounds like a Brian question. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> I believe that is a Brian question. Okay, so yeah, I mean, the data on those displays is really, it's a representation of, of what the data, you know, the aggregated from the sources by the central digital signage server. So so really by, by changing out a display, it, it has no effect on the underlying data in itself, of itself, right? And, you know, so in the, in the system that we outlined in the presentation here, um, uh, the, the replaced or the new unit, the Modi, when you plug it in, it would boot up and launch into the, into the application and be detected as a new unit. And then the, it would actually automatically walk the user through the configuration um, of the, the room number or the equipment ID uh, to associate that display with the, the application server itself. So, um, but yeah, no data gets lost. Great, great. Thank you, Brian. Um, we are next question. What is the process for replacing one of these display units? Olivia, I believe that is your area. Yes. So great question. Um, so I think I'd mentioned it earlier in the webinar, but it is a very simple task. So say um, there is the mode broke or something is um, up internally, you have to remove it. All you do is just take a knife and you just remove the silicone um clean room seal and then you just take the suction cup with the magnet and then you would remove it from the wall um, and then remove the cable and if you have a new modi you just um, replace it the same way so just plug it in um, place it into the wall with the magnet and the suction cup and then uh play, replace the silicone clean room uh seal so that's a very um simple Perfect. task thank you thank you um Next question, what is the resolution on the display unit? Yes, so for seven inch and 10 inch, um, the resolution is a bit different. So for the 10 inch, it's 1280 by 800. And for the seven inch, it's 1024 by 600 for the resolution. Great question, thank you. Yep, thank you. Um, next one coming in, are your displays FCC compliant? Yes. <laughs> so a very short answer. Yes, all of Sysdeck and Solutions products are FCC compliant. So, um, yep. Perfect. Thank you. Um, we got another one rolled in. Uh, does the solution allow you to associate multiple displays to the same room number or tool in the case that a large room or tool needs to have displays at multiple locations? Um, Let's see, uh, I, 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 Olivia, that, that, that might be for you. Does display allow you to associate multiple displays to the same room number? So um, can you have, can you have multiple displays um, explaining what is going on in, uh, in, in one, one room? Um, so, yeah, sort, sort, sort answer. I yeah, I was going to jump in there. Sorry, I was a bit delayed on jumping in, but um, yeah, yeah. so yeah, so each individual unit needs to be have a unique id like an ip address for example right so it, you, it could be because it uses you know the traditional networking uh, methodologies tcp ip and, and whatnot um, but in the application you can assign multiple diff multiple displays to the same room so that you know the information can appear in multiple spots at the same time okay thank you brian um, next question, uh, is the, let's see, let's go back to, it, it's, it's still rolling and give us, give us just a second here. All right. Is the same display used for in-wall and on-wall units? Um, yep, yep. Olivia, is the same display used for in-wall units and on-wall units? Uh, yes, I think somebody had asked that earlier, but um, I believe yep, they did. it's the same yeah. exact unit. Just, but re to reiterate, for the um, on walls, the in wall is just has stainless steel um, wrapped around for the on wall. Thank you, thank you. Um, next question is the display. If the display is the on wall style, does it also require a silicone sealant? Yes. So in order for it to be clean room compliant. Um, the on wall still would require the silicone sealant in order to make sure there is no room for any unclean air to get through. So, short answer, yes. 
Okay, thank you. Um, so for uh, please, please remember, uh, we, we'll, we'll go ahead and wrap that one up for today, but please remember that uh, you can always email info at grantech.com with any other questions, we would be happy to answer them. Um, be, be happy to reach out and uh, schedule a meeting if you, if you need more information. So please feel free. Um, Brian, Olivia, thank you very much for your information today. Uh, we hope everybody got, uh, got something out of this presentation. And uh, again, I reiterate, please email info at grantech.com when, um, if you have any more questions and uh, we would be certainly be happy to meet hey, with you. Thanks so much. Definitely. Thank you, everyone. All right. Thank you.